Soviet cosmonauts set a new record for the longest manned mission in space. They were going to come home to a hero's welcome. The module lands right on schedule, but the retrieval team makes a shocking discovery. All three cosmonauts are motionless and unresponsive. June 1971. Three Russian cosmonauts, Georgi Dobovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev, are about to complete a record-breaking mission on Russia's Salyut space station. It's a great propaganda success for the Soviet Union. Record-setting duration in space, 23 days. At 9.28 p.m., the Soyuz 11 capsule undocks from the space station to begin its four-hour journey home. It's a textbook mission. Everything is running like clockwork. The entire re-entry and landing procedure is out of the cosmonauts' hands. The Russians do everything remotely. They control the spacecraft from the ground. They felt like they could do a better job from the ground than the pilots could on board. Technicians at Mission Control monitor every aspect of the spacecraft, including the cosmonauts themselves. There's a confidential numbering system in place to report the individual health status of each crew member back to Mission Control. Five means the cosmonauts are in excellent condition. Four means they're in good condition. Three means that the cosmonauts have sustained injuries. Two means that the injuries are serious. And one is the number that nobody wants to hear. Mission Control has been in constant communication with the capsule, and the health condition reports on each of the cosmonauts has been at five. 79 minutes before re-entering Earth's atmosphere, the cosmonauts make their final radio contact with Mission Control and sign off. During re-entry, an envelope of ionized air around the capsule blocks all radio transmissions. Waiting TV cameras capture the moment the capsule appears in the skies above Kazakhstan. Spectacular shot for the media. And the parachute opens successfully and it descends to Earth. 25 minutes after beginning the re-entry burn, Soyuz 11 lands at its designated site. It sets down in Kazakhstan right on time. The recovery team reaches the capsule and pops the hatch. They're completely unprepared for what they find. Back at Mission Control, they get the three numbers that they do not want to hear. One, one, one. All three crew members are dead. That moment in mission control when you know someone has died, it has to feel like a stone in your gut. The cause of the cosmonaut's death is a mystery. In the intervening moments between signing off on the radio and the recovering team's arrival, something has killed three people. They're all just lying there. There's not a mark on them, not a sign of any struggle. News of the disaster soon reaches NASA. NASA keeps a very close eye on the Soviet space program. It's not just about rivalry, but if something happens, we need to know about it. The agency is just two years away from embarking on its own long-term mission with the launch of the space station, Skylab. Skylab mission is just around the corner for NASA and it's going into a lot of unknown territory. At this time, NASA doctors know little about the long-term effects of space travel on the human body. They need to know the cosmonauts' cause of death, or NASA's own astronauts could share the same fate. We wanted and we needed to find out what the cosmonauts had gone through. NASA fears that heart failure could be responsible for the loss of the cosmonauts. One of the early medical concerns about space travel was that your heart could become so deconditioned after you adapted to zero gravity, because the heart doesn't have to work as hard, that once you came back down and were subjected to higher levels of G, that your heart actually couldn't handle it. 
And it was an open question of how long could humans survive in space. The previous record was 13 days, and this mission was 23. Maybe this was the limit. Autopsies reveal that the cosmonauts did not die from heart failure. The Soviet State Commission launches an inquiry. Investigators carry out a detailed examination of the landing capsule. The discovery of a ruptured ventilation valve allows them to piece together the cosmonauts' final moments. They get ready to undock, and as they undock, the hatch that closes the pressure off from the spacecraft to the space station comes loose. The cosmonauts experienced a rapid decompression, and they very quickly lost the pressure inside of their capsule. They didn't wear their spacesuits. They just had on coveralls. They quickly lost consciousness, and the cosmonauts actually suffocated. After the loss of the Soyuz 11 cosmonauts, the Soviet Space Agency made it mandatory for all crew members to wear spacesuits during re-entry. We all know the danger. We're all ready to go into space, but we recognize that it's a dangerous occupation. I think there's no question that they would gladly give their lives uh, in the pursuit of space for their country. February 20th, 1962. An Atlas LV-3B rocket rises from Cape Canaveral's launch site 14. It carries America's first astronaut. While the hopes of America hang on John Glenn's mission, some within the US government are preparing for it to fail. A recently classified CIA document revealed there could have been a whole lot more riding on John Glenn's mission. If it failed, it could have triggered World War III. The document is part of a scheme called Operation Mongoose. In response to a request by U.S. Attorney General Robert Kennedy, the CIA produces several proposals to dispose of Castro's regime in Cuba. One Operation Dirty Trick involves John Glenn's mission. It is possible that if John Glenn's mission failed in some way, that it could be blamed on Cuba and as a result help the United States in discrediting Castro and possibly result in his removal from power from Cuba.